thank you all so much for joining us here. Like I said, my name is Ryan. I'm in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. So if you have questions tonight uh, more relevant to maybe your next steps to the university, going through the deposits, financial aid, housing, I'm happy to answer those questions. You can always follow up with me or your admissions counselor in our office, depending on where you live. Uh, but tonight we're really going to focus on kind of where our alumni go. You know, you guys are coming, you're, you're looking to come to the University of Toledo to get an education. So what do you do with that education after you're done? Where do you go? What can you do? Um, this is obviously a small sample. There's only three of our alumni and, and we've got, you know, plenty across the United States and across the world. Um, but it's important to kind of look specifically at what they did in college and, and where they took that when they got out. But it is now 6.03, I think that's plenty of time, but we'll add our friends as they come in. So we will start with the introductions and I'll allow everyone then to kind of go through and tell their story. So tonight we have Isabel, we have Julia, we have Celine, uh, three alumni from the University of Toledo, specifically from the College of Natural Science and Mathematics. We're gonna go through and hear a little bit more kind of about who they are and what they're doing. And we're gonna start off with our friend, uh, Miss Julie Dietz. Uh, okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, so yeah, I went to Toledo. I started in 2009, seems so long ago now. Uh, and I joined the physics department there. Um, I went to Toledo because they had a really strong physics program, um, as well as it was an affordable option. Um, you know, when I joined, I had a scholarship um, from a group called Building Ohio Sustainable Energy Future, or BOSIF. Uh, I think it's still around these days, if anybody's interested in applying. Oh, okay, so I see I had it. I had that scholarship. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, great. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so BOSIF, BOSIF, BOSIF was great um, because it gets you involved with, uh, you know, a lot of research about renewable energy pretty early on. So I would say that was probably one of the best benefits I got from going to Toledo. Uh, was just that I was exposed to undergraduate research right off the bat. So um, after my first year there, um, I did what's called a research experience for undergrad from the National Science Foundation, so an REU. Um, I did that at Toledo doing some research on uh, solar cells or photovoltaics. Um, so yeah, right off the bat, I got, you know, involved in research. I definitely didn't know a bunch at that point, but it would, you know, you learn a lot doing it, obviously. Um, and then that set up the pathway for me to get involved with other research opportunities as an undergrad, um, you know, other REUs. I did, one summer I did an internship at a national lab, Argonne National Lab in Chicago. Uh, so yeah, through all of that experience, um, I, I was pretty well prepared for graduate school. That's what I decided to do. Um, you know, it's grad school, I guess is not for everybody, but it depends on what you wanna do. So. I knew after all of my research experience in undergrad that I wanted to work at a national lab. Uh, so I knew I probably needed to get a PhD to do that. Uh, so for grad school, I went to the Ohio State University. And instead of physics, I switched to material science and engineering. Um, material science is pretty much just looking at how we engineer the building blocks of materials to give us the desired properties. So how do we make metal stronger? In my case, I was working with electronics. Um, so I was using what's called electron microscopy, and with that, you are using this really high-powered microscope to look at the individual atoms in a material. And through that, you're able to see some things on the atomic scale that have a huge impact, actually, on your properties. So I did that with solar cells, photovoltaics, um, electronics, that type of thing. Um, looked at, you know, new techniques developing new techniques with the electron microscopes, um, as well as using them to decide how we better engineer these devices so that they have better efficiency. So that was pretty much what I did in grad school. I graduated in 2018, so not that long ago. I did a, a short postdoc, and then after that, I went to where I am now, uh, which is Sandia National Labs. That is in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, it's a great place to work. And uh, here I'm still doing electron microscopy. I'm doing that on a lot of electronics, primarily transistors now. Um, and yeah, it's been pretty great so far. So, you know, I, I really do think I, I love what I do. Um, you know, if anybody's interested in National Lab, you definitely want to get involved in undergrad research. And, you know, like I said, I think Toledo is a great place to start that. Um, yeah, so I'd say that wraps it up for me. Awesome, Julia. And real quick, if you could just give everyone kind of a, a quick definition. So what is a postdoc? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, okay, so a postdoc, this is what you do. Um, 
So once you're done with grad school, you have your PhD, uh, you can do uh, you know, a postdoctoral research opportunity. So this is usually something to sort of bridge the gap um, between grad school and whatever your ultimate job is. You don't have to do it, um, but it's really uh, preferable if you want to go into any position where you plan to leave research. So a postdoc is kind of like an opportunity for you to start leading your own research, but you still have a mentor. Um, so it, it really puts you in the position of leading research, coming up with your own ideas, uh, looking for funding sources, applying for funding. So that gets you better prepared for jobs like working at a national lab or academia, if that's what you're interested in. If you want to go straight to industry, you probably don't need to do a postdoc. Um, yeah, so it just depends on what you want to do, if that's going to be useful to you or not. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, we'll jump over now to Selena or so, I'm so sorry, Celine, Selena. Yeah, Celine. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Of course. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited that you're all here and it's so exciting to speak to you all. Um, so I'm Celine Schreda and I am class of 2019 from the University of Toledo, graduated with a BS in biochemistry. And so I was part of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at UT. And it was such a great experience. I'm so excited to talk about it to you all today. So initially, when it came to deciding on colleges, I really was just looking around and always thinking like, hmm, what school am I going to choose to and what school am I going to apply to? But really, the school that always stood out was actually in my backyard, like all along. And it really was one of those schools that grew with me because I'm actually from Toledo originally. And I know a lot of you guys are all high school students, so I went to... Um, both TPS and Sylvania schools, so had both of those experiences. And um, I decided I wanted to go to UT, UT Toledo because I knew that there were so many opportunities here when it came to both academics, honors college included, as well as research, and then also when it came to the greater community. So growing up in the city, I always loved the fact that the school was so involved and integrated with supporting the local community, supporting students and involving even yourselves as well when it comes to future initiatives and future careers. And I really took that to heart when it came to making my decision. Um, and so I toured, I did exactly what you're doing right now, <laughs> going online, going into all of these interest videos and always tuning in to seeing what students are able to do when it comes to UT. Um, and then I ultimately decided and chose biochemistry as my major. I really appreciated the blend of chemistry along with biology, but also the applicability that it had when it came to future careers and future opportunities. Um, and so I also had the opportunity to join the Honors College, and they might also be having some informational sessions on the Honors College that you'll definitely want to be checking out because it really supported having that STEM experience with my main degree, but then the Honors courses supplemented that and allowed for really great seminars and discussions, as well as meeting great non-STEM friends as well, um, and supplementing my college experience throughout that as well. Um, so I did get involved with research. Um, as was mentioned earlier, really research is one of the hallmarks of Utilito. It's incredible how many opportunities there are. Um, I actually decided I wanted to go into a research lab that focused on the bacterium tuberculosis. And we wanted to look at this bacterium and see what proteins exist in the bacterium to possibly target when it came to creating drugs in the future. So I focused a lot on like protein structures and solving them. Um, as well as, you know, biology and biochemistry and techniques associated with that. And that really said, um, that really set the stone for me when it came to my final like honors project and honors thesis, but also gave me really great skills that I use to do other research internships as well. Um, so right after my first year, instead of like, um, you know, kind of thinking about what I wanted to do with that first summer, I chose to do the first year summer research experience which is really a unique program that only first years are able to partake in and it allows you to get an early access into research labs. And then after that, I did a research internship with Massachusetts General Hospital and um, the Harvard Stem Cell Institute. So up in Boston, and that was really exciting because that was in a different field, but tangentially related within like stem cell sciences. 
And then after that, I also did a research internship at the University of Michigan when it came to health equity and inclusion, as well as gastroenterology and hepatology. Um, so those were all just example internships that you're able to have when it comes to taking your STEM degree and taking your own path and creating it in so many different ways. Um, and alongside, of course, research, there's so many fun extracurriculars you can partake in. Um, I know we'll probably talk a little bit more about the sciences and STEM. And so I was really involved with the American Chemical Society student chapter on campus. Uh, we got to do so many great things within the community when it came to science outreach and exactly like we're doing right now when it comes to science outreach, but add in actual experiments and goggles and everything like that. Um, and we even got to go to national conferences, meeting students from all over the country, sharing our own research at big conferences and just showcasing what we're able to do on the national scale. Um, and then I also got to do some great initiatives like within the community, the bridge program, which helped connect Toledo to the unhoused population of the city. And then I even got to do comedy improv. So we have a club on campus that was called Free Pizza Improv and they still are hosting meetings through like Zoom and Microsoft Teams. So you should definitely check those out. Um, and yeah, so all of that coupled together led to me wanting to think about what I wanted to do within the next step. And I really was thinking along the lines of the medical field. So when it came to junior year, that summer after junior year, I decided to apply to some medical schools. Um, and I ended up choosing after a whole year of interviews, uh, Columbia VPNS. VPNS stands for Bachelor's College of Physicians and Surgeons. And so that's where I'm actually zooming from now is um, this is my apartment in New York City. And I actually got to come back to join you all on Zoom from my clinical rotation. And it's at Gracie Square Hospital, which is an affiliate of our hospital system. And it's on the Upper East Side of New York. So if you watched Gossip Girl, you might know the area and the location and everything like that. Um, so it's really exciting because all of the skills I had when it came to my experience at UToledo create like an incredibly transferable platform when it comes to what I'm doing now. So even on campus now, like I was elected by the class to be the AMC rep. So I'm the rep for the Association of American Medical Colleges for Columbia. And I'm also the fundraising and financial coordinator for one of our student clinics. And that clinic is the Human Rights Initiative slash Asylum Clinic. And then I'm also involved in the theater group. So improv to theater here. We do a community like student run theater group. So really the world is your oyster when it comes to taking your degree from U Toledo and going from wherever you wanna go and follow whatever dreams that you wanna achieve. Awesome, thank you so much. And again, for everyone watching, uh, joining us this evening, we are gonna do a Q&A at the end with all three of our, our wonderful panelists. So start thinking now about your questions. If you have them, um, feel free to put them into the chat. You can either put them publicly for everyone to see, or you can send them directly to me if you'd like to ask anonymously. Uh, we will go through all of those again at the end. So if you wanna put them there now so you don't forget them, that's totally fine. And I'll go piece by piece and ask our panelists. But now let's hear from another one of our more recent alumni, uh, Isabel. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so I am also class of 2020. I just graduated in May from New Toledo, and I'm originally from um, Elyria, Ohio, just 30 minutes west of Cleveland. Um, when I first got to New Toledo originally, I did not know what I wanted to do career-wise. I just knew that I was really good at biology in high school, and so that's what I did in my undergrad. I quickly joined from um, my scholarship, the Building Ohio Sustainable Energy Future, which Julia mentioned earlier. I was also a part of their scholarship program and I became really involved with sustainability, um, campus um, green, greening and um, renewable energy um, research. And so um, most of my research and um, community involvement was through BOSEF and volunteering. I ended up um, becoming really, really involved in community gardens around Toledo. Um, there's a huge urban agricultural movement happening in Toledo right now, and I ended up doing my undergraduate thesis on food deserts in Toledo and um, food sustainability, um, especially within um, climate and resilience. Um, this is really important for the city of Toledo to get their hands um, working on this type of topic. And so I worked with um, the Department of Environmental Services from the city of Toledo to create 
um, a food desert map um, around Lucas County. And I was able to um, submit that for their climate resilience programs right now. And so this is still an ongoing project that I was able to help create. And I was really excited that a lot of BOSEF students now are actually starting to um, do more community involvement within those urban agricultural movements, actually. Um, so I'm still working with them actually right now. And I'm really happy that this is still a movement still going on. Um, that I was a part of. So there's huge opportunities at UToledo. Uh, my degree especially was from the environmental science department. It is not from the biology department, even though my degree was in biology. Um, I was really happy that I chose this pathway because even though I have this love of biology um, and science background, I really wanted to do sustainable work and um, focus on ecology and environmental science. So. Um, that's where my degree is from. And it's not well talked about um, that people are well known of because I joined that degree program after my first semester, uh, my freshman year. Um, anyways, um, after that, doing um, food desert work um, in Toledo, I decided I really liked um, the food like safety aspect, having um, a concern for public health, but also having that environmental science program. And I ended up, um, getting full-time work now in Columbus, Ohio, as a pathogen lab analyst for um, food safety net services. And I decided early on my senior year that I did wanna take um, a year off of school. I did wanna go to grad sc graduate school, but I wanted to take some time off to focus on what I really wanted to do career-wise. And so this is what I'm doing right now. Um, I work at a pathogen lab, like I said, and so we're testing, um, meats, ready to eat products, and also pet food for E. coli, salmonella, and listeria, and other assays. And even though I didn't really have a lot of experience working in a lab prior, because um, my undergraduate thesis was on food deserts, um, I still had some lab work under my belt from an independent um, honors project I did um, through the honors college, actually. And um, this had a leg up on um, other um, applicator, ap applicants to uh, the, um, the company. And right now as an analyst, I do um, sample like hundreds of samples a day. I really enjoy it because I work independently. I like working in a lab and I get to train other people on certain assays and I do PCR work, polymerase chain reaction, um, using technology to understand um, how to analyze uh, food for uh, safe consumption, really. Um, but just this last week, I was accepted into a graduate program um, at the University of Michigan. And I took this time to really focus on what I really wanted to do. And I hope this helps you guys understand um, that even though um, you might have some insight of what you might wanna do um, after graduation, um, there's still you still have time to decide. Um, there's no rush to it. And I was really happy that I took some time off to focus on what I wanted to do because I got into a program relating to food sustainability. Um, that's at the University of Michigan, um, their master's program in sustainability and development. And what really set me apart from everybody else was my volunteer work at UToledo, um, my uh, participation in sustainable organizations and not just taking my degree, but taking it um, a step further doing honors classes. Um, I did an internship at the Lake Erie Center um, for two years. I really enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I would have not gotten there had not realized that I liked environmental science also um, during my freshman year. Um, even though you still have time, you know, there's still, um, there's still some, um, you're questioning what you want to do right now, um, trying to understand and focus what you want to do in a career wise. Um, and so I'm just telling you, you know, you have time to understand and Utilita was a great place to start because there were so many opportunities, especially in the environmental science department to do volunteering and really realizing what you want to do. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, so thank you again to all three of our panelists. Those were uh, wonderful 
uh, explanations and journeys through kind of where you've been and what you're doing. Um, this is where we'll open up though to everyone out there who wants to ask any questions, you know, about the things we've already discussed or things that you're curious about when it comes to attending the University of Toledo. Um, I'll go ahead and start us off though with a question um, I, I think is, is important for our students because a big perception for a lot of the, the people that I recruit is that, you know, the, the hard sciences and the sciences in general are, are really challenging. It's, it's, it's really difficult. So can you all kind of talk maybe a little bit about the classes that you had that you felt really challenging and the 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 ways that you navigated it right how were you still successful even in those courses in your undergraduate your graduate field um that maybe were more difficult than you expected so open question whoever would like to take that one i'll start um first of all uh, I thought physics was really hard in high school. I'm sorry, Julia, but I just found it really difficult. And so I put it off until my senior year to take physics. And I ended up doing excellent. I um, really studied really hard. I put I knew that I needed help on it. And so I went to the tutoring center. Um, I sought help from my professor. He was always open for emails and discussions. And um, Again, like I really sought help from my other classmates with physics. It really, it's it's a small classroom environment, honestly. Um, especially even though it's like um, physics, it's a, a general class that most people take in the science, the college natural sciences. Um, it's still smaller class sizes, and you get to know your friends pretty well. You see them everywhere. Um, so, like physics was really hard for me in high school. It was a breeze. I got A's in physics. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, what you just said about sort of leaning on your classmates, I think that's so true. Um, you know, I'd say like the biggest, one of the biggest lessons I learned from undergrad and grad school was that it's not always going to be easy. Um, you know, I, I, you know, in high school, and I think this is probably true for a lot of us, in, in high school, a lot of things just came very naturally to me. So I didn't have to try as hard. So, you know, going into some classes like quantum physics, where like not a lot of it was super intuitive, that was kind of a shock to my system. And I didn't know <laughs> exactly how to handle it. So I would say probably the biggest thing is just realizing, uh, you know, it, it's meant to be hard. You're not stupid if you don't understand it at first. Um, you know, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room to figure a lot of these things out. It just takes time. Um, so, you know, you just gotta learn not to beat yourself up, try to have some confidence. And I really think working with other people is the best way to get through those things because it turns out so often that a lot of the other classmates have the same questions and they're not understanding the same thing. So that that's pretty huge, I think. Yeah, I totally would like to echo exactly what you've all just said. Cause I think it's a hundred percent like correct that you really do gotta like go through college or grad school or all of these different programs with your classmates and really rely on each other for support. So I think one of those classes that was challenging was probably organic chemistry. That's usually one of those that just like incites fear in like every single individual's, you know, body or system when they have to think about that course. Um, and so we were really going in and we were all really concerned. This is the course that we're all hearing about. This is gonna be difficult, tough. But what's really, really interesting about how it's set up and also especially at UToledo is there are so many different opportunities where you can get that extra support and also get the extra practice that you might want or might need. And so, for instance, we had these lecture halls, but the professors had really great office hours and we could go and attend. And they also had review sessions, which were great because that was directly through the professor. But then through your classmates, you could set up different study groups. And that's what some of my classmates would do. We would just go over some different programs and different reviews and everything like that in the library. And then we would also attend some more formal like tutoring sessions that the TAs would host or even the tutoring services like in the LEC and everything, the Learning Enhancement Center at the UToledo, everything that they would have and that they would host, super accessible, super open. And really after going to like different you know, sessions, you try these, you test these out, it all does become to fit in and all comes more naturally. And so it really is exciting just to know that even though as you go, you know, further and further in your education and life gets busier, you are able to tackle these challenges and rely on each other to help each other and support each other. 
Awesome. Thank you all so much. Uh, we've got a couple of questions that have come in, so we will kind of go through these. And again, if, if anyone would like to weigh in, please feel free to do so um, in, in whatever way you'd like. Uh, but the first one is, what type of classes should you take if you want to major in biochemistry? And just real quick, I'll let everyone know, um, for your majors, whatever it might be, whether it be biochemistry or biology, your advisor is there to always kind of guide you through a program. So you don't have to do extensive research into a course catalog because there's a lot of classes at UToledo to figure out the, the right one to take. They will kind of walk you through what you, you need to take to graduate. And I'll, I'll post a link to a, a plan of study is what they're called, which kind of details the classes you would take in a particular major. But if anyone would like to weigh in and kind of on the sorts of classes you would take as a biochemistry major. Yeah, totally, Ryan. Thank you so much. Yeah, I can definitely talk about this. Uh, just like Ryan was saying, there's really, really great support when it comes to the advisors. So you'll have like your major advisor. And then if you also decide that you want to do departmental honors, you'll have your honors advisor as well. And that's really helpful because they'll both keep you on track when it comes to both getting all of the classes for the major, but then also if you want to do the honors track, getting the classes that you might want to make an honors class um, possible as well. So when it comes to the classes, it's really exciting because there is a lot of crossover with other fields of sciences. So especially in the beginning, if you're a little unsure, like, oh, do I wanna go directly into biochemistry or biology or environmental sciences or biology with an environmental sciences concentration or even physics, all of these different majors, everything like that, you're gonna have a lot of great general courses when it comes to like biology and chemistry and physics and maths, all in the beginning, especially like in the freshman year and the sophomore year as well. Um, so those are really helpful to take. And then additionally, what's really great is that when you go up into junior year and senior year, you're able to take more specialized courses. So when it comes to biochemistry, you might take some more classes like within the actual chemistry department, like analytical chemistry, or when it comes to senior year, you might even take electives like protein chemistry or biophysical chemistry. And it's really great because along this pathway, if you choose, for instance, the honors track, you might decide you want to take one course as an honors course and then make an extra commitment to the course. So maybe just decide that you want to do an extra little project alongside the instructor just to show that you're taking the material one step further. And it really can, you know, go directly into your future plans when it comes to careers, because you can always get some more experience when it comes to different projects like that. Awesome, thank you. And we'll jump to this next one. Uh, so for our students who are incoming freshmen, uh, are there any available uh, internships for first year students. So does anyone here do any internships or lab work or research when they were first year students at UToledo? Um, I don't know if this exactly qualifies, but so um, I did the, so with BOSIP, which it sounds like other people here have done, um, you can get involved with research with them right off the bat in your first year. Uh, that's what I did. Um, you really just need to go around talking to professors, uh, if that's something you're interested in. Um, and then, yeah, I, I did right after my first year. So the summer after my first year, I did the RU, the research experience for undergrad. So you definitely can at least get involved in research in your first year. Um, internships, I'm, I know that people do it, like especially in the engineering program. I personally didn't do like an internship at an actual company. Um, but I think actually that's one of Toledo's strong suits is getting a lot of the engineers involved in those internships early on. Yeah, I, um, my internships were um, starting my sophomore year, so not my first year, um, but I know that the environmental science department, um, Gail put the link below in the chat, um, that environmental science students are required to do internships and um, the opportunities for those are actually on the website on the department homepage. And I found my internship, I'm sorry, I didn't like, I don't think I said the full name. I did it at the Lake Erie Center, the LEC. And it's right outside of Toledo, about 30 minutes away. And it's right on the lake and it's a beautiful facility. And um, the Lake Erie Center itself has an internship um, every year. And um, the environmental science department requires the internship for environmental science majors, but they have um, resources for other majors as well, um, like um, websites and links to go to uh, for internships just around the area. Um, as far as the research goes, 
Um, also um, in BOSEF as well, that research experience is really helpful um, in your first year if you wanna do research with BOSEF um, because um, a lot of students don't know what they wanna do exactly. And so they usually have some projects um, available that, um, that professors are looking for um, students to start working on. And so um, it's easier to approach a professor if they have something in mind um, and maybe you're into it too. So it's good to ask your professors, email them and also look at the website. Um, look at the department page that you're looking at and look at the faculty and um, see if any of their interests match up with yours. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, the next one, which kind of touches on what you're talking about, Isabella, kind of it's hard to know what you want to do right away. Um, so what was the hardest part for all of you about figuring out what you wanted to do? Because I know it's a question a lot of our prospective students get asked, I'm sure almost daily is what do you want to do? Um, so how did that journey kind of work for all of you? I know you touched on a little bit already, but if anyone wants to add any more to kind of their stories and the way these the ways they figured it out. I guess I'll just say again, like, oh, sorry, Julia, but um, you have time to figure out. Yeah, you have time to figure out what you want to do. Um, the way I did it is I just found what interested me, especially um, in Toledo, there were so many opportunities for volunteering. Um, I volunteered at um, Toledo Public Schools. I did like outreach programs. I love working with kids, but I ended up just falling in love with community gardening. And um, the people that work there uh, really needed help. And so I saw a problem I went for um, finding a solution. So you're just looking for your interests and you're just maybe your extracurriculars that you're into now. And that could end up being like a career, like just like that. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. Um, okay, I'll, I'll go now. Uh, so I think probably the biggest thing you want to think about uh, when you're deciding what you want to do is what makes you like, what, what are you passionate about? So, you know, obviously like with renewable energy, it's that's something that'd be easy uh, like to be passionate about. Um, so if you're passionate about something, you're probably gonna enjoy it quite a bit. I think the biggest problem for me was being passionate about maybe too many things. Like I was just interested in a lot of different things. Uh, so I'd say the easiest way to navigate that is to just really get involved with all these, as many research projects as you can, you know, do different types of research. Uh, you know, just try something out for a few months, you know, professors will always welcome free labor, free help. Uh, so just try, try different projects out, see what motivates you, what you find the most interesting. You know, undergrad is a great time to explore those things, then you have plenty of time to figure it out after. Yeah, I would totally echo again, like what you all were saying, because really it is about like exploration when it comes to undergrad and just figuring out your passions and also just seeing like what you want to do in the future and like what steps you want to take towards that. Um, so I think I also was really on the like research bandwagon, like trying out so many different projects and also I think like keeping up to date when it comes to, you know, giving back to the community I grew up in. So it really meant a lot to me that Toledo was always sponsoring service initiatives or even supporting different like service programs and extracurriculars on campus and even supporting students when it comes to going beyond campus and creating their own initiatives as well with reaching out to the community. So what I really found was I wanted to be in a career that would kind of blend my science love and interest and then also blend my love and interest for service and then even considering social justice alongside all of that and so I really found that when it came to medicine and it really came with just me trying out the field as much as I could meaning I tried to do as much when it came to medicine but in different perspectives so for instance like my research internship at Massachusetts General was more translational clinical but also basic science research. So it was like translational, but more basic than anything. And that was really helpful with figuring out what I wanted to do if I wanted to do like a research track in the future. And then I also did volunteering. So I was like a child life volunteer at Toledo Children's Hospital. Um, I also did an internship where right after high school, it was this like summer youth employment program that Toledo and ProMedica joined together to try and get different high school students involved and into the different ProMedica areas. Um, so I was at uh, ProMedica Flower Hospital and I was able to do some more research and also do alongside that some work with like nursing as well. 
And so that was really good because I was able to see medicine and healthcare from different perspectives. And then of course, adding in shadowing from like Toledo Clinic and Toledo Children's and different hospitals around the area. It's really, if you are thinking for instance, like pre-med or even something like pre-dental, pre-health you know, health professions, pre-vet, like this is definitely a school and a city that has so many different opportunities for you. And I'm sure like you might hear more about like UTMC as well and then the Promedica um, partnership that they have going on and how many doors that's opened. Um, so it's really incredible and you can get, you know, different head starts on that even as an undergrad. Awesome. Thank you all so much again. Uh, we have a little under 10 minutes here. So we're going until 645. So if you all have any more questions, make sure you put them in the chat. Again, if you don't want to ask them publicly, if you want to ask them anonymously, that's totally fine. Just send them directly to me. Again, my name is Ryan. It's there on the screen. Um, and then I will read them and I will leave your name off of it. Um, I am just curious about this one. If everyone could just give us a quick rundown of where did you live during your college career? So maybe the residence halls, if you lived in apartments off campus, just so people can get a better, get a better feel for what it's like to kind of go Go through the living experience of the, the city of Toledo. I can start this one. Yeah. So being from Toledo, I actually ended up just commuting from home, which was pretty convenient. I know that's something that like some people might consider, especially if they're from the area. Um, you can definitely save in terms of like money, but you're also still able to really get involved with the campus life in general. There's a great commuter lounge and you can always like feel free and stop in between classes there. I also found different areas like on campus. I could like meet up with my friends or even meet up with my classmates for study groups or just go in between like meetings and different classes as well. So if you wanna consider commuting, that's definitely an option and even not necessarily like having to, for instance, maybe live at home. Sometimes maybe students will live off campus eventually and then they'll commute in and go into campus as well. For me, I stayed in the honors residence hall. I stayed um, um, at Cannon and it was a single unit um, and a shared community bathroom. And then I stayed at Tucker Hall my sophomore year, um, which was two residents per, um, room and that was really nice too because I felt really alone kind of um, in my single unit my first year so I would advise against getting the single unit if you really want to get the single unit um, especially because of the pandemic currently I would you know say that this is the best go for you but I actually really enjoyed having roommates and I ended up having four roommates after that um, I lived um, off of Northwood um, at edge 1120 and then after that I moved into the lofts above Barnes and Noble. Um, and I really liked that one too, because it was so close to campus. All of them were so close to campus. You had a good um, distance to walk, um, but you know, you don't need your car on campus necessarily if you don't have one. Um, I know first year students when I was there had to keep their car at um, Scott parking lot, the Scott parking lot. And I really didn't need it because I stayed on campus, so. Yeah, and it was really bad for my wallet when I stayed above Barnes and Noble because there was um, so many eating places right below me, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see. I think my first year I stayed in one of the honors buildings on, on campus. I think it was called A House then, Academic House. I'm not sure if it still exists. Um, but then after that, uh, I moved into an apartment complex with a few of my friends uh, from Toledo. To be honest with you, I can't remember what they're called now because it's been a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, the can't, there's like a lot of apartment options really close to campus, which is nice so that you can still walk back and forth. So I, I like that a lot. I think, you know, back then the apartments were actually like a little bit cheaper than staying like uh, on a residence hall, but the residence hall have some other advantages, like, you know, you're right next to the food, all, all that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, th that's what I did. I will, I will want to say, I forgot to say this, but McKinnon and Tucker and the other honors residence hall that are like in that little area on the, the north side of campus are right next to the College of Natural Science and Mathematics. And I would roll out of bed like five minutes before a class sometimes to get to one of my general education classes my freshman year. So yeah, I, I, I love those residence hall. I just didn't really like maybe a single unit. If I could redo it again, maybe I would room with roommates, even if you didn't know them. 
With the Toledo winters, you cannot undervalue a short commute to your classes. I think a short walk in the winds of February in Northwest Ohio, hard to beat. Um, we did have a question come in and uh, I I'm gonna kind of rephrase it a little bit. So if the person that asked this, if I'm not getting right at what you're, you're wanting to know, just let me know and we can kind of ask it again. Um, but how would you describe the, the city of Toledo? What's sort of the feel of the city? What's it like being in, in the community? Not so much the university, but just kind of, you know, Lucas County, T Toledo. I'll begin this one, hometown <laughs> advantage. <laughs> So I love it because it's amazing. I still like, I'm describing this whenever like people ask me like, oh yeah, you're in New York now. Like, where are you from? Like, how was it? How would you describe it? And I'm known in my class as like the Toledo representative. Like I still, <laughs> I'm just gonna show it. I have my Toledo book bag. I was literally wearing this <laughs> from the Clark Academy on the subway coming back from the Upper East Side. Just as an example. <laughs> When it comes to the city of Toledo, it's really, really great because it's a mid-sized city. So like 250,000, everything like that. So fourth largest city in the entire state, but it still has this like almost like smaller town feel to it. Like when you're walking around beyond the campus, like if you're walking around and you were just, let's say downtown, like sipping on like different coffees, or if you wanted to see like local art or different exhibits, it's really, really interesting because it, you feel like you're not necessarily like in a towering large city that's really difficult and like tough to navigate. So it feels really achievable when it comes to that. And then I really enjoy the fact that everywhere you go, it's got the Midwestern hospitality, which if you move to the East Coast or if you move to the coast, you're gonna appreciate very, very much. Um, so you definitely have that. Everyone's really kind and nice. And I think one of the biggest things also about Toledo, if you're a foodie, is that we have so many different cultures and we have so many different cultural cuisines that you can engage in as well. So lots of different restaurants. I actually remember stopping by like the career office and they had these like little notebooks now that have like all sorts of different restaurants in the area that you're able to experience if you want to taste the world while you're at Toledo as well. Um, and then of course, alongside that, there's such a great diversity when it comes to the population. There's people from all over and there's immigrants from all over in different pockets of communities. And it's really just an exciting place to be, especially when you are like, you know, early on in your 20s or even in your teen years and going through college. It's such a great place that feels comfortable but still has all the opportunities that you'd ever want. Yeah, going off what Celine said, the Museum of Art is free. I took a class there once. Um, I also would love, I love downtown Toledo. Um, it's right on Maumee River. And I used to do um, educational talks on the Maumee River during my internship. And I always tell people like, come down to downtown, like after you go on the boat ride with me and I get to tell you about how great Toledo is, you can walk around with me. And we can also talk about how great Toledo is um, and eat food. Um, another thing about Lucas County in general is that it's one of the most biodiverse places um, basically in the world. My professors would tell me that um, some of the landscapes in um, Lucas County are more rare than tigers. Um, if you were to compare them to an animal, a landscape to an animal, they were um, just as rare as tigers. And that is exactly right. There's tons of parks and recreation um, in Lucas County, um, just outside the door. And um, yeah, there was a lot of great things um, happening in Toledo right now because um, they're trying to get um, all the parks within 15 minutes of every um, residential area um, in Toledo. And I think they're accomplishing that just this year. So that's really great if you're into outdoor activities. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, it's been, been a while since I've lived into Toledo. So it's probably like a decent amount different from when I lived there. Um, I, I, I remember thinking it had some pros and some cons. Um, you know, some of the pros that you guys have mentioned, I think are really true. Uh, I really like the diversity of the city. That was great. Um, you know, you could easily feel like you're meshed in quite a lot of different cultural events. Um, I loved the art museum, um, you know, they had a symphony there. So they do have like pretty much all the things that you would expect to see in, in a big city. Um, I personally like bigger cities uh, more. I get, that's like a personal preference thing. Uh, you know, I liked the parks that were there. I liked the river. So 
yeah, it's, it's not a bad place to live. Awesome. Thank you all so much for giving us uh, some of your evening. We really do appreciate it. You know, we're at uh, 647, so we've gone two minutes over. Um, but if I can just get one more second of your time, I always think this is a fun question to end on. Um, and this can be, Julia, maybe if it's not there anymore, it's totally fine. So give me your number one restaurant in Toledo, because there are a lot of great places to eat. And, there, and I see everyone has a hot opinion already, which I love. I'll go first. It's Home Slice, and everyone else is wrong. But please, Anyone else jump in uh, your favorite restaurants in, in Toledo or places these students should check out when they get to campus? Best restaurant in Toledo, hands down, is actually on campus, Rice Boulevard, right oh, next to Barnes and Noble. A lot of people love that place. And I even texted my friends right now how badly I really wanted Rice Boulevard. It has sushi, it has um, bibibab, it's got Korean food. I love Korean food, so that's my favorite place. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Isabel, oh my gosh, you're so right. I also like immediately I thought of Rice Boulevard and Oasis. So Rice Boulevard, like every time I come back to Toledo, I have to have Rice Boulevard. Like it's like the first thing on my list. Like I have to go back. I've had sushi and it doesn't compare. It doesn't compare. I've even, I've tried all these different areas. It does not compare, I'm telling you. So Rice Boulevard is amazing. And then Oasis is really great too. If you want like classic American eats, um, it's really great. Like for instance, right before you go into a football, ball game or even if you're just like having a bunch of friends over a study party um, I know even like the honors college would like cater from Oasis like all the time and it was really great for all of that but then it even has like Mediterranean food which is really really great as well so you can have so many different options that way as well um, there's so much to eat oh my gosh just eat your way through Toledo you'll enjoy it uh, yeah I remember Oasis we used to go there all the time so that's funny that you mentioned that um, I think the other place that we went to a good amount, do they still have like, I think it's called Tony Paco's, like yeah. that, that hot dog place. I'm a vegan now, so I probably wouldn't go there now, but back in the day, I did like that place quite a lot. And they, didn't they have like the signed hot dog buns or something? Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of famous people go there. So that was a fun place to go. Awesome. Thank you all so much uh, for your restaurant recommendations for everyone who comes to campus. They can go to those places, except Oasis. I don't think Oasis is open anymore. I think it's gone, maybe uh it may be just move though i don't know you know it's worth looking into i'm not an expert um but again thank you all so much for giving us your evening to all of our panelists thank you um for all of our students that are here today again if you have additional questions please feel free to reach out and let us know either myself in the office of undergraduate admissions i can connect you with people in housing and financial aid or gail here that's also in the chat today um she works with the college of natural science and mathematics directly so if you have questions for her also feel free to reach out but otherwise uh, everyone have a great rest of your evening and as always go rockets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.